It's really hard to know. You know, current estimates are that the hemp-derived CBD market in the U.S. and North America could be about $22 billion. Mm -hmm. And in terms of what this gets you, this gets you products like these into the hands of, of North American consumers. That's right. For us, it was a strategic acquisition to accelerate our entry into the U.S. Um, these products are available in about 16,000 retailers in North America, about 13,000 in the U.S. So places like uh, Walmart, Costco, Whole Foods, Amazon, uh, consumers can buy these products. And they have a supply chain that ties them into about 30,000 acres of hemp grown in North America. Uh, and so we like the supply chain and the products. Does this have any CBD oil or CBD product in it? Or it doesn't. So this is this from... Does not. This, this is, is hemp. hemp. That's right. It's hemp. Uh, it's fully uh, legal in the United States and in Canada, uh, available in, at retailers. Even the, the oil is, is hemp seed oil. Um, so what it doesn't do have... That? So you could cook with it. You could add it to a smoothie. Uh, it's high in protein. It's you look nutritious. really skeptical. Well, I'm just curious. <laughs> I'm curious. <laughs> it's very nutritious. Uh, if I have the munchies, will these help? They, uh, they will. Yeah. So they're they're high in protein. Uh, they taste uh, have a nutty flavor. A nutty flavor. That's right. You mm -hmm. use them in pancakes. You were saying. I use them in pancakes uh, when so, I cook pancakes in the morning for my kids. Yeah, you okay, have there an you idea go. there. Right. Right. Is the ultimate goal to, to have a portfolio though of CBD? That's right. And so products? so if you think about their supply chain. They have relationships with 30,000 acres of, of hemp grown by farmers. They have a state-of-the-art processing facility where they make these products. And then they have a distribution channel through uh, 13,000, the largest retailers in the, in the U.S. Uh, and our intent is to use that supply chain to help accelerate the CBD products that we will introduce by the summer uh, through that same supply chain. All of the retailers uh, are facing demand to, to supply and sell CBD products. Uh, and so this helps us speed up that, that process. I've been wanting to ask you since we had Alex Berenson on the exchange a couple of weeks ago. He wrote the book, I'm sure you're aware of, about the dangers yes. of marijuana. Tell your children. Yeah. Tell, yeah, tell your children. And he talks about how there's a lot of psychosis as a result of marijuana use that people aren't focused on because it's dismissed as, oh, that's, you know, old fogey stuff and... You know this this market is great what happens are you are you convinced enough about the science to say we're not worried about facing litigation or blowback or those kinds of concerns down the road you know we um, when we look at that there's a lot of that science has been debunked some of it some of it hasn't uh, there are certainly when I look at cannabis I think that prohibition causes far more harm than the product being prohibited right Allowed, if you think yeah. about mass incarceration of African Americans and Hispanic Americans, if you talk about, if you think about uh, medical patients who don't have access to medical cannabis, mm -hmm. if you think about drug war violence in Latin America, that we went so quickly from saying there should be medical marijuana and and you know all the appropriate uses of it that we've talked about to recreational marijuana is effectively fine. That happened so quickly. I think I think part of it has to do with the fact that um, in the United States. Uh, cannabis is scheduled as a Schedule I narcotic, so the, the, the DEA considers cannabis to be as dangerous as LSD and heroin, and that, that just doesn't make sense. Ninety-three percent of Americans believe that medical cannabis should be legal. You can't get nine, nine out of ten Americans to agree on anything. And so since it doesn't make sense that you're seeing this push for, for uh, government agencies to rationalize cannabis legalization. But is your business ready, for instance, when you roll out CBD products, to have dosage information for food? How many, you know, grams of, I don't know what the measurement of CBD would be in a certain serving, or even for medical marijuana, um, if, there, if there had to be warning labels? That's uh, right. Are you ready for that? So our uh, Tilray's medical products are available in 12 countries around the world, all through, in all those countries, through pharmacies. Uh, all of those uh, products have dosage guidelines, have uh, data sheets uh, on, on precise uh, dosage and what's in that, that, that GMP product. Uh, and so we'll do that same thing with uh, CBD products here in the U.S. So even for food, That's pick right. up a bag of CBD granola, That's and right. you'll know how much is in each serving. Exactly. Down, down the line, what is the biggest slice of your business likely to be? Is it going to be medical or is it going to be recreational use of uh, 
cannabis related products? That's a hard question to to answer. You know, I think about the, the global medical opportunity as being very clear. Uh, today, there are 41 countries that have legalized medical cannabis. Uh, eight years ago, there were 15. It's, it's really clear that we'll get to 75 in a hurry. I think we'll see legalization in the United States in the next three years. And That's knowable. It's really hard to predict the next three or four countries that will legalize. On the recreational side, I heard this morning a number about taxation of, of recreational marijuana in New Jersey that was a sales tax of something like $40 per ounce. Is it likely that marijuana, legalized recreational marijuana, will be so heavily taxed that it will be available, it will be a rich man's product, rich person's product, and that there will still be a street product that, uh, out there? I think you've seen states like Washington, uh, when they initially implemented their uh, adult use program, that their taxation level was too high, and that actually fueled the black market, the, the illicit market. And so you always have the, the illicit market to keep things in check. Uh, and so the tax rate is too high. That's the way to think of an illicit market. If the, if the tax rate is too high, it actually fuels that market. And so that's the worst outcome. Um, what, what we would prefer is that the tax rate be rational so that that illicit market can be wiped out and then use that, that tax, uh, those taxes to benefit people who have been harmed by uh, cannabis in the past and cannabis prohibition in the past.